According to the Data Camp report on the state of data and AI literacy, three of the top five fastest growing, most important upskilling priorities were data skills. That includes business intelligence, data science, of course, with its core emphasis in AI, and basic data literacy skills. Interesting, 85% of the respondents agreed that organizations must invest in lifelong learning for their workforce to adapt to this new era of data literacy. Let's jump in. Vinny, we'll start with you. In, in your opinion and experience, what, what are some of the pillars of a successful upskilling strategy? Well, let me, let me be a little bit contrarian and say, you know, you, may, you mentioned the point continuous learning. This area is growing, changing so rapidly, right? 24 months ago, LLMs were the hottest thing. Now in the enterprise, I'm starting to hear, oh, maybe LLMs are not right for us. Small language models might be better, right? So it's changing almost overnight. Um, second, the reality is customers have way more data and knowledge than do vendors. And we tend to get all our messaging from vendors. So when we talk about learning, we need to be careful, upskilling, we need to be careful and not just focus on what we're getting from vendors. So, I mean, I think there are a lot of dimensions. Clearly, everyone needs to learn what's what's changing, but we need to be a little humble about how much we really know in the bungalow world. Uh, here, I'll give you an example. No pharmaceutical company is going to share molecular data with, with any vendor. No oil company is going to share seismic data with any vendor. Coca-Cola is never going to share its formula with any of us. So those are just small examples of stuff vendors will never see. There's so much operational data that we don't have access to, and if we had access to, we don't have the practitioners who understand how to apply it. So that's one perspective we need to bear in mind. Great, great. Thanks, Finney. Donald, I'm going to jump over to you. Um, what are some of the pillars of a, of a successful upskilling strategy? You know, I think the um, we have to think about what the motivations for upskilling are. And I think two of the pillars that are sometimes overlooked about upskilling is it must be aligned with your strategic objectives. You're not just upskilling for the sake of it. You're upskilling because there's a strategic need to upskill. And so the specific skills that you enable people with should be aligned with your strategic business goals. That'll give you value. And ultimately, it gives them value as well. There's a whole set of other skills that they can learn in their own time, in their own way, and as an, an adjacency to your core skills that you're looking for, but you need to align those with your strategic uh, business goals, which also means that you know it's got to be tailored learning. You align the skills not only with the, the strategic goals, but also with the specific roles that people are in. And so, if somebody is working, you know, as an administrator, they will be upskilled in skills that are appropriate. Other people who work in analytics will be upskilled in a different way. So you need to align the skills with the with the job roles, and you need to align the skills with the, the business objectives. Once you get all that in place, I think you have a much better uh, platform for doing your upskilling. But I think of these as being the primary pillars. It's a pillar of alignment with your strategy, with the the goals of your uh, your job roles, and of course, you know, um, once you upskill people in this way, or you enable them to upskill themselves, then you also, of course, increase the um, the benefit to employees generally. So, um, you know, let's get focused about it, and um, you know, make sure that we're actually achieving something with this. Yeah, role based is a, a great concept. Paul, what about you? What would you add? The first thing I would say is actually having a strategy for upskilling. Many organizations don't. They let people learn on their on their own. It would be a little bit controversial here saying that AI is still is in its it's in its infancy. Yeah, it's been around for a long time, but for where it's at, uh, and people organizations have been running lean for a number of years, they suddenly think that they can just switch a flick a switch, and it'll be on, and that they don't need to train people. So if I go back to the classic thing that that CFO says to the CEO, if we train them, they might leave. And the CEO goes back and says, well, if we don't train them, they might stay. So that, that, that applies to AI as everything else. So having a strategy 
and aligning that, what Donald said, with your vision, your strategy, and, well, getting a strategy first. Yeah, awesome. A Anders, I know you've got something to add. Bring it. Uh, well, I, I think, uh, you know, Donald uh, put, got a key point, which is uh, it has to be targeted. Uh, I mean, we're still in an era where, uh, you know, getting people not to click on obvious, uh, you know, spam in their email is a, a problem for the IT department. And if you if you can imagine that uh, there's a corporate you, you know, thing, you're like, okay, everybody, go learn AI. Like, you know, if you've got an organization with 120, 200 people, that is not going to fly because you know the difference between the the person you have doing analytics, you know, in the in the office on the 14th floor versus the person doing mail in in you know in the first floor, what they need to get out of it is totally different. So I think a key aspect of this is saying that we can't have one AI uh, training course that the whole company needs to go through. That, that wouldn't work for any corporation. So it's going to be identifying the key aspects of, of you know the roles you have and saying, for a developer, what do they need to do? For an executive, what do they need to do? And for someone in marketing, what is their application? And each one of those is going to have possibly different uh, restrictions about what data they might want to submit to those. And is it a private cloud or internal public? There's each is going to be different for everybody. You know, well, you know, one other thing I'd add is, you know, the definition of the enterprise, all of us live in the white collar world. We tend to look at digital tech technologies as the, you know, the, the end goal. We forget the physical world allows for a lot of robotics, drones, uh, autonomous vehicles, and so on. Frankly, a lot of exciting stuff is happening right there that affects manufacturing, R&D, warehouses, and so on. That's part of the enterprise, too. Sometimes we just focus on the back office, finance, and share, and forget that the enterprise is much bigger, and automation is much more than AI. Yeah, human-eyed robots are probably the most exciting thing in if you talk to the robotic people around the world, right? So we need to be careful not to just focus on digital white collar stuff. Mm -hmm.